All right, the special board meeting of August 17, 2023 is called to order at 6.30 p.m. Um, can I get a roll call, please? Possibly here. Possibly here. Paul's here. Uh, Tex O'Me here. A2, adop adoption of agenda. Um, to recommend the Board of Trustees adopt as presented in the, ag the agenda for the special board meeting of August 17, 2023. Can I get a motion? I move. Sir. There are no changes to the agenda. Thank you. Um, discussion? Proper question on those in favor? Customer. Brianna texted me I. Um, B1, Pledge of Allegiance. Um, the Pledge of Allegiance, I'll just read it. Please rise, turn up your hats, ready to begin. B2 civility statement. Um, Lester. Communicate clearly and concisely with respect to the time and others. Listen Listen objectively, carefully, considering the opinions of others. Understand the counterproductive effects of disruptive, demeaning, and intimidating behaviors. Understand and respect district policies and procedures. Maintain a respect for the rich history of the district and efforts of others to serve in the past. Thank you. C1 public comments, recognitions, and reports. We don't have any public comment. We don't have any public comment cards for this evening. Thank you. C1 interview candidates for the Board of Trustee vacant seat. Um, can I get this moved in? Motion. I'll move it. Um, okay, it's recommended the board interview the candidates for the board of trustees seat and appoint the board of trustees to replace Mr. Tim Jorgensen's vacant seat. Um, the way this is going to go tonight, I have um, this super fancy high tech cup. So I'll come down, you guys can pick a number, and that will be the order that we um, do the interviews. Um, before I do that, I do want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank the three candidates for being willing to step up and take on um, this position. Though it is a volunteer position, it's lots of time, lots of hours. Um, lots of your energy goes into making this district the very best that it can be. And I really, really appreciate um, and respect every single one of you for throwing your name in the hat and being here tonight and um, being willing to step up for our district, our students, our families, and our communities. So thank you very much for being here. Um, and I do also want to thank Mr. Tim Jorgensen for all of his years on the board. And um, Mr. Jorgensen, I don't know if you're listening or um, if you're still even involved out there, but I just want to thank you for everything that you have given to the district, both on the board, um, as an admin, and as a teacher in the classroom, as a coach on the field, athletic director. You definitely changed lives in this district and in this community for years and years, and I just wanted to thank you for everything you've done um, for our district. So with that, I'll come and bring your
Okay, so we do have a series of questions that we will ask. It is completely up to you as a candidate whether you want to sit um, in here and listen to the candidate before or after you, or step outside and we'll come and get you absolutely your prerogative, whatever you choose to do. I believe that's it, and we can get started with um, asking questions. We will go one down the road, one at a time, asking the questions in order. So who's number one? Who's lucky number one? All right, Mr. Bosworth. President, I will be stepping on the dais at 36, and we'll step back in after the group of this. Are you ready? Okay. Um, so we'll just go ahead and see question number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Um, do you have prior experience serving on a governing board, specifically a school district board? Please um, explain such prior experience. I served two years on acting on real estate high school district school. Okay. Yes, I have experience. Have you worked? Thank you again for showing up. I mean, so obviously, uh, it takes a lot to not try to do this, especially if you live in this manner. I did it myself and I, uh, I lost this family here. So it can be a nerve wracking experience. Yeah, have you worked on any school committees or participated in any school activities recently? I have uh, I did one meeting at Vasquez High School uh, site council um, last school year. Uh, other than that, no, I've not been part of any other uh, committees or boards at any of the three schools. We're going to go backwards today. It's backwards today. Uh, Chad, please describe any other community business or activities in which you have participated. Describe your role, whether you think you work as a volunteer or employment related. Uh, on your, you have PSA 145 here and all about that. So, please elaborate. Yeah, I mean, I spent a greater part of 10 years with the Boy Scouts of America, now the Scouts of America. As a Pacific Scout Master, leading our youth through different wilderness adventures, backpacking, hiking, uh, teaching them uh, different skills and uh, traits that they may use uh, to, to help them later on in their life. Um, that's the extent, the most extent of my my uh, community organization within uh, the town and dealing with the youth that work now. Um, aside from being the school board and helping out and going to schools, doing Miscellaneous things when needed. Thank you. Uh, why do you want to be a school board member again? Honestly, it's not that I want to be. Um, as the first time I was elected, and we'll note that there's only two people in this building uh, that have ever been elected to this position. And I'll note that he and I both uh, didn't just win by a little, we won by a lot. So that tells me that the community around us knows the both of us, they trust us, and they elected us to serve on the board. Now you ask why I want to come back. Truth be told, I don't. But my community called again and asked me to come back. Teachers at our school called me and asked me to come back. Staff at our schools called and asked you to come back. I have a busy life. I don't need more to add to it, but I'm willing to take the call if that's what needs to happen. 
I am hopeful that you guys will find something in these two gentlemen right here that goes above and beyond me. If you don't, I'm here to serve. That's the way I look at it. it. It's not, I don't, this isn't a popularity thing for me. I don't need any more friends and I don't need something else to do. But because the community keeps calling, I listen because this is my town. I've been here since I was 13 and I will be here until I retire. That's all I have. What do you see the basic purpose of public schools? Educate our youth, teach, and show them the right way to, to grow, uh, educate, uh, and it's a way to bring our community together. I think um, the better our schools are and the more participation we have from our community, whether their kids are in the school or not, I think it only benefits our towns. Uh, so for, for me, it's making it the best possible learning environment for our kids to learn and feel comfortable and grow and just become great little uh, young adults. Dad, what is the role of the school board in fulfillment of our goals? Uh, the role of the school board is to govern, govern the district. Uh, ultimately, it's, it's, it's our superintendent's job to lead and guide and get our schools going in the right direction. It's our job to govern him, um, not tell him what to do, not ask him to enforce what we want, but it is indeed our job to uh, make sure that things are being implemented in a positive way. That it's not going to bankrupt our school district, our schools. It's simply an oversight committee as far as I'm concerned to our superintendent. Briefly describe your commitment to public education at our local school district. I mean, my commitment is I'm here. I've served two years on the on board already. Uh, I've been very vocal. I don't hold much back. Um, pretty well black and white person. Um, for me, I just want the school district to be whole. I want it to be the best district in our surrounding areas. I want uh, it to continue to grow. Uh, and I want to see new programs continue to come in. And I just want to be the best place possible. I want our kids to feel appreciated. I want our staff and our teachers, our teachers especially, to feel uh, that they're heard and that ultimately makes them want to come to work every day. What do you see as the strength of the school district? Its size. It's small, it's uh, it's able to maneuver. It could maneuver pretty easily to grow if you have like-minded people that want to see it grow. Um, I think that you have a teaching staff that will go above and beyond any other school district around us because it's small. I think that our teachers are 100% what keeps us together. We have solid principles now. We have, from what I can see, solid superintendent leading. And I think all of that has come together over the last three years that I've been really paying attention. And I can think that it will continue to go that way if everybody just works together. The biggest problem in this school district, and I've said it from way back when, is you have the clicks in the groups and everybody whether it's the teachers, staff, parents, the community has to come together as one. And it's not about the star athlete or the perfect academic excellent student. It's from our, our special ed students all the way to our star athletes and, and uh, over the top smart kids. Everybody deserves the same chance. Everybody deserves the same opportunities. So I think if we can, again, keep the community together, keep the schools together, keep the staff, 
the, the, the district office, keep everybody on the same kind of page, if you will. The sky's the limit for this district because it's small and it's agile. And it, can, it can move in ways that bigger the districts can. Well, Rock, paper, scissors. Chad, yeah. <laughs> so, what do you see as the area or areas most needing improvement in the school district? <clears throat> One, I think the board needs to come together. I think the board, the, the games you see, um, people getting up, leaving, people stepping out during the audience. First and foremost, that has to change because it makes the leadership look extremely weak to the public guy. I think that, uh, again, I kind of really touched on it in the last question. It's getting the clicks out of the district. And there are tons of them. Um, I've been in this town a long time, as Brianna has. And it's very clickish. That needs to change. Everybody in this office needs to be working on the same team. Everybody needs to go in the same direction. And everybody needs to pull their weight and be allowed to pull their weight. I know there's some instances where jobs are taken away from individuals because someone doesn't think that it, they should be doing it. It's, on, it's my job. Well, you know, if you're in X department, you're in Y department, you should be doing X and Y's jobs. Whoever's assigned to them, not crossing over and contaminating. Uh, each other's departments. So I hope that's getting worked out. I hope it's ironing itself out. Um, that's what I have for you with that. All right, Chad, with that, that was the last question. Are you sure? You want to ask one more? No, I didn't. <laughs> All right, I'll come back for the bonus from you. Thank Again, you guys. Thank you very much for being here, showing up, putting your name in the hat, and if you putting the effort for the much appreciated. President, are we going to allow a statement at the end of the question, so we're going to wait till all three applicants answer the questions. Absolutely, you're absolutely right. I'm sorry, Chad, that was that was not written on my paper. I, my brain malfunctioned. Um, if you would like to add anything to your interview, to a statement, anything that you wanted to let us know that we didn't ask, um, now is the time to do that. Uh, I, not that I need to add anything. Um, you know, again, I came because I was called on by a lot of community members. Um, and, and I'm hopeful, honestly, straight up, you find something in these two people. I know, Granny, you have an issue with me. That's fine. I know Ken probably has an issue with me. I'm cool with that. But at the end of the day, we're all here for the same reason. We all want to do the best for the students in this district. And we want our teachers to feel respected and, and loved and, and appreciated. I give you kudos. Things have really turned around. It, 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 it appears that things are firing all cylinders. That's awesome. Uh, I hope it continues to go that way. Uh, again, if you need me, I'm here. I wouldn't be here for any other reason. So uh, you call upon me, great. If you don't, don't feel like you're hurting my feelings. I'll walk out of here with the same head held high, and I'm okay with it. I put in my two years, and I'll, I'll do more if you need it, but let's see where it goes. So thank you again. Thank you, Chad. Yes, please. Thank you. Records if I retrieve the ISS. All right, stepping up to the hot seat, we have um, aluminum names, and we'll go through the same 
process um, will go down unless Lester decides to throw in whatever he wants to throw in there. We'll go down in order. Like, <laughs> all right. Um, do you have any prior experience serving on a governing board, specifically a school district board? Please list such prior experience. Um, good evening and thank you all for having me. Um, I have not served on a school board, but I have served on many other boards. Um, I was on the Tom Lee board for 18 years. 15 of those years as president. Um, I was on our church board, the hub in Sunland for 10 years. I was on the Sierra Youth Board for two years. And I'm also on our HOA board um, with Ms. Landers HOA board as treasurer and uh, our community chair. Welcome. What are you most proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Which is your highest priority and why? One more time. Yeah. What are you most proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? And That's, what is your highest priority and why? I'm sorry, point of order. These are different. The first candidate we asked directly all of these questions. And yeah, we didn't. Yeah, this is what I have. I'm sorry. Do you also have their the candidates' packets? Yes, I'm I'm listening to what the candidates have. Okay, so the candidate packet packets are the questions that we asked. We did not ask these. So they're the no. If you're requesting me you turn your mic one on the top, we should hear you, please. There we go. Thank you. I oh, know I wouldn't. I don't. I would like to hear the answer, but I'm not for you here. Have you worked on any school communities or participated in any school activities recently? Please list. Um, the only school activity I worked on was uh, chaperoning the high desert dances for the last three years, I believe. Thank you. Let's turn number three. It's going to turn order. It's one of your questions. I understand that those are better questions, but we can't switch in the middle. We have to ask the same questions to every single board member. Those are fair and equal. That's an answer. Let's go through it. Maybe we'll add on. Do you like to ask the lady? What's that? Will you ask the lady? No. Describe any other community or business activities in which you have participated. Try to roll on whether you work was volunteer or employment related. So I think I answered some of that in that uh, first question. Um, all that basically was volunteer basis. Um, as far as a work type of thing, uh, I'm a director of construction. I have a multi-family housing and deal with a lot of permitting and things like that that could be useful um, in a school district with any construction projects that are going on. So that's my background and knowledge base of that. Why do you want to be a school board member? Um, I want to be a school board member basically uh, as a parent and I want to help out. I want to be here for the kids. I want to be here for the school board. I want to be here for the, the district staff. Um, I have a passion of helping as you can see with my record. I've been doing it for 20 plus years. Um, 
I feel with my background and what I can do, I can help out a lot in many different aspects, whether it's like, for the construction aspect, helping figure out problems, um, just being here, being at the schools to help out in any type of situation that's needed. Um, I'm a helper. I've stepped down from a couple other boards that I've been on, so that I have open time to be able to be here. Do you see the basic purpose of public schools? Um, basically, it's to teach the kids, to be here for them, to make them be leaders in the future. Um, we are here, the teachers, the principals, everybody's here to make sure that our kids can be the best that they can be. Um, I think that's what the ultimate goal is uh, I'm super glad that you guys are putting the construction programs in the programs that need to be implemented to help the kids that maybe don't want to go to college but they get a great education and a great future um, there's just a lot of things that I think we're starting to do that is very helpful for, for the children right. So what is the role of the school board in the fulfillment of that purpose? Uh, I believe the role of the school board is here to help the school district, uh, to help the schools. Um, but the main thing that this board needs to do is to be here. Whether you win a vote, you lose a vote, you're here for the kids. You can fight your point. You can you know, do what you need to do. But in the end, the school board has to be united. They have to have a united in front at the end, walking out of this door. A vote was made. That's what it is. And that's what it needs to be portrayed to the community. Thank you. Briefly describe your, briefly describe your commitment to public education and our local schools. Answer the last one, but um, my commitment would be just basically to, to be here and help with that, whatever anybody needs. I'd be the new person in. You guys have sat in your positions for a while. You know what it takes. You'd be teaching me so that I could one day, you know, be as good as you guys and helping out with this school district. Um, that's what it takes. You have to be able to listen. You have to be able to learn. You can't come in on everything. It's basically helping as much as you can and learning. What do you see as the strengths of the school district? Um, I feel the strength is also the size of the school district. Um, I have two totally different children that are one year apart in school. One is a straight A student, one has a learning disability. Um, but the school district has been here for both of them. We came from LAUSD where my son was miserable. He hated school, he hated being there. He came here and it was, the change in him was totally different. He liked coming to school, not on that football field right now, practicing stuff that he wouldn't have been able to do in LA or anything like that. So I just feel that the school district, because of the size, is able to cater to the kids and help out with everything smart or disability. What do you see it as the areas needing most improvement? The only thing that I've seen is it seems like there's sometimes a communication gap between the board, the schools, and the parents. Um, I think it's an easy fix. Most likely it's just making sure that everybody's communicating what's going on here to the school, you know, to the parents. 
Um, honestly, I went to a school board meeting last week for the first time. I knew they were here, but I didn't really, there wasn't something that I was like, oh, I should look at. I think that we need to make sure that more parents know about the school board meetings, whether they watch them online or they come in, but it would be helpful. As many people as you can get involved, the less confrontation or less conflict you're going to have, because then everybody that can see what's going on, know what's going on, there's nothing to complain about. You're here, you know what's happening, you know, step up. Um, Very much. That was the last question. Let me go write it down. Um, if there's anything that we didn't ask that you would like to share, any last comment, any statement that you would like to make, now is your time to do that. Um, my last statement is thank you to the four of you, Dr. Stapasi and Yolanda, everybody in the back. Um, you guys make the school district what it is. And I appreciate it. I'm sure there's a lot of other people who appreciate it. So thank you again. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Inazus. Yes. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Sure. There we go. Thank you so much. And we'll just go ahead and jump right in. Do you have prior experience serving on a governing board, specifically a school district board? Um, please state such prior experience. I do not have experience on a governing board. Welcome, sir. Have you worked on any school committees or participated in any school activities recently? If so, please list. Recently, I have not. While working with the Los Angeles, describe any other community or business activities in which you have participated. Describe your role, whether you work as a volunteer or employee. Well, employed with the LAPD in uh, 2009, I started a youth program, an after school youth program, referred to the boot camp. I uh, collaborated with the LAUSD and combining our assets together, providing a, a uh, after school program that was geared to increasing academic success for the students as well as disciplinary uh, success. Uh, it was a great program. We, we catered to over hundreds of kids from ages nine to up to 17 years old, and it lasted for about five years. Why did you want to be a school board member? I have a vested interest. Um, I have kids in each school here. I have family members who work in the district. Um, so I have a compelling interest to ensure, to be a part of that conversation, to make sure that uh, their age keep my children have academic success, as well as uh, the employees here have professional growth, they have opportunities, and they feel that they're safe in the safe environment to progress in their uh, employment. Um, that's the main reason why I, I feel uh, necessary to uh, be on the board. The other reason is because at an early age, at 17, I joined the military. I had a compelling interest to serve my country. Um, at 23, I joined the Los Angeles Police Department. Um, so I had a compelling interest to serve the citizens of LA. Um, four years ago, I moved into Acton, and I fell in love with this community. So now I have a compelling interest to serve and give back to the citizens of Acton. What do you see the basic purpose of the public schools? The purpose of public schools is to prepare students um, for either higher education, entering a trade, or entering, entering the workforce after school, and to ensure that they do that, they can do that successfully. Um, it's about uh, collaboration, communication, and just um, building, giving, giving the students the necessary skills to be productive in society, because they're going to be the ones that are going to carry on uh, this community over time. When we're, when we're done, or we're tired. So, what is the role of the school board in the fulfillment of that purpose? The role of the school board is to um, really look at the citizens, our community members, their beliefs, their values, 
and their vision of the public school system and then transform that into actionable um, organizational strategies and policies to achieve those goals. And those goals could be academic goals, uh, the financial stability of the district, as well as the um, employment satisfaction, job satisfaction, professional growth. Um, those three are, I think, are the main purpose of this board to ensure that happens. Briefly describe your commitment to public education and our local schools. I'm uh, committed to putting the time, the effort, um, the, the dedication to work collaboratively with the other board members and the community members, all the stakeholders, to achieve success, organizational strategies that work, that provide results. What do you see as the strengths of our school district? He was reiterated uh, two times, and I, and I have to agree with them. It, it's the size, the size of the school district and the engagement of the community here. Um, being here for four years, I, I mentioned certain events, and just the amount of people that come out is, 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 is welcoming. It's overwhelming. I think you can use that power to really transform uh, the school district or to add to the school district's success because of the engagement of the people here in Acton. They really care about the community, so they care about um, student success. So we can use that as a tool to just collaborate with them and actually come up with reasonable and plausible uh, ideas to just uh, make this a better place. What do you see as the areas most needing upgrading in improvement in the school district? Since I've been here, I've noticed two things. Uh, one, um, the retention of staff. Um, I think it's important that you we look at the organizational pulse and kind of gain some perspective of why people are leaving, why we have uh, retention problems. Um, because, you know, the teachers, the, the principals, they're the leaders of, within the organization. And when you keep changing leaders, interrupting the organizational flow, and that, that can be problematic. People want consistency in leadership, they want consistency in instruction. Um, it, you know, last uh, year, I know my daughter, who's in fifth grade, had multiple substitute teachers. Um, that interrupts their learning, and so that can be problematic. So I think just having consistency with staff, whether you may have to look at the organizational policies and strategies that are geared to for professional growth is important. Uh, the next thing is retention of students within the living within the district. Um, I've talked to many of my neighbors who have kids, but they go outside the district, um, and, and it's really disturbing because we should have the academic programs or the after school programs here in Acton in our communities, they don't have to go outside the district until we can receive some of the things that they're looking for. Thank you. That was the last question. And I don't know if we need to write it down. Okay. What would you like to share with the board? A closing statement. Is there anything that we did not ask that you would like to share? I just want to thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it, and I appreciate your time and all the community members coming out for uh, to support us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask. Um, this is probably out of the realm of a typical board um, interview. But as Lester said, the interview questions on the sheet that I did not see was different. The interview questions are different and interesting, and I think that the answers would be interesting. So if anybody objects, I'll ask the board members first, if you object to me asking the candidates if they would mind answering four more questions in the same order that they were brought up to begin with, it would just be... Um, I think number two, three, and four are questions that would be helpful in the selection process. Um, number two, four. Okay, so we'll do two through five. Number one was already asked and answered by all of them. So is, are any of the board members opposed to me asking the candidates if they would be willing to come for a second? Uh, I'm not, no problem. I think we should do this. Okay. Great, I'll be following the same process I did the last time. Okay. Um, candidates, if any of you are uncomfortable with this, you can absolutely say no and it won't 
you know, hard feelings won't count against you anything, but I would really like to bring you guys up for um, five more, four more questions. Is that okay? Let's do it. Okay, let's go. Let's see you in a bit. Oh, come on. See you in a bit. All right, so we're going to go ahead and ask two, three, four, and five. Okay. All right. Um, what are you most proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Which is your highest priority and why? If you want to, if you want to answer the first one, and then I'll go back and, and ask the second part and then the third part, because I know that's a lot. Here, repeat the first one. So I'll repeat the first question or the first part of that question. What are you most proud of in this district? Most proud of our teachers and the student retention that we have here in the graduation uh, rate um, of our seniors that graduated from our schools. What would you like to accomplish as a board member? My biggest thing has always been unity, unity amongst the, um, the district office with the teaching staff. Certificated staff and the committee just bring everybody together and make that just one solid, great learning environment for everyone. And the follow up to those is which is your highest priority and why? And it's kind of the same as the second. It's it's my highest priority is having unity amongst teachers, staff. Uh, principals, parents, students, just everybody getting to be on the same page and getting rid of the clicks. That's what it was three years ago when I ran and to this day, it's still my biggest priority. We could all just get along and agree, not necessarily have to agree, but agree to disagree at times. Um, it'd be such an awesome place. You heard me right now. All right, so just I know it was three different questions, but that was all number two. So, Lester, go ahead with number three. Next one. Six part question. <laughs> as a trustee, how will you fulfill your role as an individual and a board member of the government? That was good. Um, for me, it's always seeking out the truth. And sometimes when the truth isn't forthcoming, you got to dig. Sometimes when you dig, it's ugly. And when you dig, sometimes people don't like the uh, the results. And sometimes you gotta leave. But I will continue to dig when I know I'm not given the answers, the questions that I'm asking that are on my rights as a governing board member, I will find out the answer. Some people won't like it. A lot of people didn't like it. But I got my answers. I know the truth. Another person in this room knows the truth, but I guarantee you most of the board doesn't know the truth. So we're good. That's why I'm not with that question. That sounds cryptic, but I'm sure you can figure it out. It'll be on video if you want to watch it. This is a really good question. Describe a good board meeting. And what are the objectives of the good board? A good board meeting is when all board members stay in their seats to answer questions that they're asked. They have done their homework about what's on the agenda for the day so they can ask the, the pertinent questions to whatever the scenario is. And having good, open, honest debate with one another to come up with the best solution to the the issue of problem instead of each person having their own individual idea of what is right or wrong. You know, we all may not agree on everything, but pretty much think that most people are common sense people and can come up with what is the best solution for the problem. It may not be my solution or yours, but if it's talked and debated on an honest manner, it probably worked out pretty easily. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. 
Um, just my character, my integrity. Those are probably my two biggest strengths. All right. Thank you so much, Chad. Again, I appreciate you being here. Thank you again for having me. All right, Mr. William Mays. Um, we'll same process, same four questions. Oh, we'll go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bill, that first one is that three part question. I'll read it all and then if you want me to break it down for you, I can. What are you most proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Which is your highest priority and why? So the first part is what are you most proud of in this district? The one thing I'm most proud of in the school district is the way that the kids come together. The way that the kids, from what I can see from my kids, they all get along. They bring other kids into their groups, whether they want to or not, but they're able to accept. It's an accepting community for the kids. And I think that's the, the best part of this school district. What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Um, I would like to accomplish just helping out and being here for the board, for the teachers, for the staff, and making sure that everything's continuing on. Um, the special ed program, I think, is a big part that needs some more work. It's getting there, needs more work, and I think as board, we could help kind of get that situated. Which is your highest priority and why? I think my highest priority would be the special ed program. Um, and just so we can bring more kids in and help them out. Thank you. Welcome back. As a trustee, how will you fulfill your role as an individual and as a member of the governing board? Uh, I would fulfill my role by being there, being able to be at schools for events, um, being able to be able to talk to the, uh, the board members, the school staff, whoever needs needs me, I would be there for them, be able to help out. Describe a good, describe a good board meeting. What are the objectives of a good board? Uh, the objective of a good board meeting is to have an agenda, to go by the agenda, and to just have everybody in a calm manner be able to answer questions, debate their questions, and then come up to a, a conclusion of the questions. Whether it's your conclusion, whether it's somebody else's conclusion, you come up with that conclusion, you stick with it, and you go out, and that's what you present to the, the community. Hey, this is what we came up with. It's a board decision, and you know, it's not your agenda. It's not somebody else's agenda. This is. The school board agenda of what needs to happen. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a board member. I think the strengths I bring as a board member is as being on multiple boards for many years, I have the knowledge of obviously being on the board and making decisions. Um, I also would be able to help, like I said, with the construction aspects as there's a lot going on in these schools. Um, code compliance is making sure that we don't have any issues, ADA issues. There's a lot of things that could happen that I can help out with. 
Okay, that was the last question. So the real last question. Then. So thank you again. Appreciate you being willing to come back. All right, welcome back, Mr. Dinosaurus. Um, ready? Yes. Okay. The three-part question, what are you most proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Which is your highest priority and why? Did you want me to break that down? Uh, sure. So, you know, I'll start with the first one. Um, I think that the, the, the involvement, the staff involvement, uh, is probably the biggest thing that I've seen that, that I'm grateful for here because even being into the district, um, the amount of energy and the amount of um, effort put into certain things, certain certain events is phenomenal. So I think the effort on behalf of the staff willing to ensure parents are welcome, ensure that we feel comfortable, I think that was that's great. I think I enjoyed that. We we to the district. So yeah. The second part of that is, what would you like to accomplish as a board member? I would like to accomplish um, ensuring that the organizational culture here is productive. It's it's conducive to creating lifelong learners in our students, so they can be curious and move on within their education or within the workforce. Um, that would be my goal to ensure the culture can do that. Which is your highest priority and why? My highest priority is creating lifelong learners in our students. So I think that's very important. Knowledge is very important. Um, it's gonna be important to their success. So I think that would be uh, one of my driving, uh, at least one of my uh, number one priorities if, on the school board would be that, yeah. Well, again, as a trustee, how will you fulfill your role as an individual and as a member of the government board? I would build my role by engaging with the stakeholders, um, learning about uh, their perspectives, doing problems from their perspectives, so I can gain, so I can make informed decisions. Um, I think that's my number one uh, act that I would use to be able to be on, on, while on the board is just engagement, understanding that the, the root cause of issues and, and trying to make informed decisions. Describe a good board meeting. What are the objectives of a good board meeting? A good board meeting to me is, is uh, a well thought out agenda and collaboration between the board members and viewing other uh, board members' views, their lens, uh, since understanding, and then having results, producing results at the end of the meeting, because ultimately that's what the people want. They want results. That's a good board meeting. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a board, as a member of the board. I think the, the, the most important strength that I bring is um, a people person. And to be a leader, you have to be a people person. You have to engage with people and be able to communicate effectively. You have to be able to communicate with sympathy and empathy. So um, that's one of the, the, the main, um, I think that is my number one characteristic that I bring to the board. And that was the very last question. So thank you very much. Thank you. Can I ask a, a, a parent question? Uh, diversity? It's, it's not a bad question. It's not going to happen. I, I promise you, it's not going to hang you up in any way. I'm just wondering if we need to do a comment card and we need to have to step up as a member of the community with a comment card. Do that if you grab your plate. That would be a, that would be great just to follow procedure. If you could do a comment card, I'll, we can pause now. Okay. 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 Yes. I have a suggestion that maybe each government board member can ask one all question of each candidate. Is are you opposed to that? Anybody on the board of most of that? Let's discuss it a little bit. Everyone's come in here. Everyone is, we've tried to keep this. Anybody's been in, in, through an interview process with governmental agency or tag care agency. You know that everybody is asked the exact same questions. Um, 
I want to make a statement that I have not participated in your answers. I will not participate in not one nomination if that occurs. I will respect the vote and outcome of the board. But this is one of these things I think goes on and on and on and on. The reason I propose is because, as I see you have a question, I think each candidate has uh, some important things that uh, a little clarity to people. Because they have told us what they would like to do, what their goals are. The moderate elbows would be accomplished. So I just have a The, one follow up the, for each candidate. The follow up question would be the same question for each candidate. Well, based on the number of No. Yeah. This, 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 this is not a, a job interview. This is a public forum. So, that's what we're doing. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. What's the process? I know the process. I went through a process. I've been on this board a long time. I went through a appointment uh, uh, exercise diet in which had a board member rating people, uh, basically campaigning for one certain person, be rating other people. It seemed more like a, a county fair judgment than it did anything that was embarrassing. That's not what I'm suggesting. Okay, I, I've said I'm not going to ask questions. I have not. I, I've sat on that end. I've never been on this end of this process in any board that I've ever been on. So I don't know if we are allowed to ask follow up questions. Dr. Sabian, do you know what that's? I just don't want to break the rules. I, I'm more than willing to do it. I just don't want to break any rules and have anything be unfair. The reason I ask this is because this is a very rapid process. We have a very short amount of time to get to those people. Um, we haven't had any real information except for today. And just to be diligent and make sure that we understand the positions that they put forward. So that's what I'm asking. This is, this is rapid fire. We've gone from Mr. Jorgensen leading to quick decision to do a appointment to get the names in. Very little community development. That, that's why I was missing this. I, I do agree with your point that more information is better. I just don't want to break any rules of interviewing on a school board. Um, I, I could go ahead and get our um, legal representation. Uh, Mr. Wankard, he's on standby. If you have any questions that are. Can we go ahead and take a five minute recess while we get ask legal this question and then we'll come back and decide whether or not we'll take a five minute recess?
It is 7.35, so we will go ahead and um, come back from our brief recess. Thank you, Dr. Sahakian, for um, contacting legal. What our um, legal said was that board members are allowed to ask a follow-up question as long as we stuck to the script of our questions. Board members are um, able to ask a follow-up question based off of the answer that was given. So we can't just go rogue and start asking random questions. We can ask a follow-up based off of the answer. Um, so that said, I will leave it just the same as the, the other time we brought you back. I'll leave it up to all three candidates. If the three of you are willing to come back up um, for a follow-up board question, that would be great. If not, it won't count against any decision-making. I'm getting thumbs up from everybody. Here we go again. I have no follow up questions. Zero. Thank you. So let's do the follow up question first, and we can fully end the interview process. And then I do have two public comment cards, so we'll go to public comment cards after that. So let's continue with the interview process. Chad, will you come on back up? Okay, so like um, as in regular board meetings, we start at that end and make our way this way. So go ahead and ask a follow-up question based on Chad's answers. So Mr. Wadsworth, you repeatedly said that you want to bring unity to this district and unity to this board. How would you go about doing that? I don't truly believe you're in a unity on this board until you have one person in particular off the board. I think um, until that happens, it's going to be a mish, mismatch, hodgepodge of everybody getting, getting along. Um, you know, as the board president, I guess try to reach out and send that all branch to everyone, somehow have team building time, maybe on the weekend. To try to get everybody to, to understand where each one of you guys are coming from, maybe. You know, my two years on the board, it it, it was hard, it was difficult. Um, because you have one person that rules the roost and is expected, of, you know, and everybody else is supposed to fall in line, basically. And when you don't, you have shenanigans and trade that happen. And that to me needs to stop. That's the biggest problem you know, on this board. I think we can see any of us do a simple question. That's got to stop. Go ahead. Don't have to follow up questions. So thank you. For real, real is the last one. Oh, no, take <laughs> no, it. I don't promise. At this point, no, I don't promise. All right, Mr. Mays. Um, same thing, we'll go down and ask a follow up question. So, if you have a follow up question to any answer that um, Bill had, you can ask it now. We'll go ahead and start with Tom. Yes, Mr. Reyes, you uh, said that one of the uh, when you see the area most need improvement at school district, uh, you mentioned communication, and I just like you to elaborate on what ideas you have that would help. This district communicate with the stakeholders, with the family, with the kids. Uh, as far as communication, I think it's just a matter of um, getting it out there. I'm sorry. Uh, Hang on one second. I'm not sure. If, um, yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. I'll start one of the back. <laughs> I think. I think he said he's out. Yeah, he said he's out. I'm so sorry. I just wanted to double check. Here we go. I just think it's getting it out there, being, making sure that people know there's board meetings. Yes, it's put out, but I think it could, there could be a better communication platform. Um, Facebook is 
have a lot of stuff. You put a lot of stuff <laughs> everywhere, which is great. Um, I just think that between the stuff that's brought up in this board meeting, which is public knowledge, I don't see that really much anywhere. So I think that's what we need to get out. The meeting that is put somewhere on an email, something of that sort. Is what I'm getting towards. Okay. Thank you. I think when I started as a board member, I had a lot of ideas about what that role looked like. Um, and uh, I was curious how committed are you to gaining education around what the role actually looks like, what you have to do, and what a successful board member, all the things that go along with that. There's a whole lot of education and training available, but it's a big time. Can that happen? I'm sorry, when a board your question has to be based on the response that Yeah, so um, you know, you talk about what his role in the form would be. You don't have to go on that. We didn't get a No, no, that's okay. Uh, clarifying questions or follow up questions based on the responses provided by the candidates, just for clarification. Right. If you were paid for it, you'd your your uh, position as a board member, um, you said you want to help provide leadership. How are you going to make sure you're providing the correct kind of leadership? That would be expected of a board member. Uh, that would be by doing some training. Uh, basically, there's a lot of different leadership trainings. I'm sure that you guys have some. Um, the biggest thing would be following up with you guys. You're you're the ones that are on the sport. You're the ones that know how the sport runs. Every board runs different, so you need to get with the people that are on the board to know how that board runs. Um, I could tell you how my board ran, but that's not the same way as your board can run. So it's basically knowledge off of, I'm going to be calling you a lot saying, hey, what about this? What about that? You know, that's the way I see it happening. I do not have a follow up question. So thank you again. Thank you all. Again. Okay. Figure out a way to do this one more time. All right, Mr. Reviews. We'll go through the same the same process, um, asking follow-up questions based off of answers. Tom? Yes. So you said uh, you made the statement that there are community members, children in this community that their parents don't bring to act on, but also because of the lack of student academic and after school programs. So what do you envision for more robust academic programs and what kind of after school programs to like to see happen. Well, I first start by talking with the uh, the, the parents that made these comments and trying to figure out what they're actually looking for because it's the general comment they made, but they didn't get into particulars about which program that they would like. But I think doing a survey or doing talking to all stakeholders and figure out what are we missing here. And then we can go forward and figure out how do we bring that to the school district, whether we have to absorb that from the outside or within our own talent here at the school district. So to answer your question, I would have to do more, um, more research and kind of figure out what are they talking about? And what specific programs are they leaving for? Rich. Uh, U.S. Army. I don't have any follow-up questions. So thank you very much. Does anybody have anything else they would like to throw out there? No. Okay, so now I'm officially calling the interview process over. Um, I'll go see if Mr. Foster wants to come back for the public speaker.
Okay, so um, we did have two members of the public turn in speaker cards. I'll go ahead and start in the order that they were received. So um, we have Mr. Chad Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. If you could step up to the podium um, and state your name. Each speaker is allowed in, allowed in three minutes and there's no more than 20 minutes spent on a single subject. Go ahead and say your name. Hi, my name is Chad Wasworth. Good evening, board. I'm a uh, father of a uh, high school student at Vasquez High. Um, I appreciate you guys having this uh, this meeting tonight. Uh, as a parent and someone that is very trained in diversity, uh, it's a big concern of mine to have diversity within our schools. Uh, and I'm curious as a parent if any of the board members, or, sorry, any of the uh, participants tonight in the selection process by chance to be bilingual, bilingual, um, possibly Spanish would be uh, great. Uh, I am not. So for me, I would love to see somebody sit on the board that brings a little more diversity. We have a female, which is great. It would be great to have Spanish speaking person of some sort um, that maybe can relate to our Hispanic population within our school district. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you for taking my question. I don't even have to appreciate it that much. Thank you, Chad. Our next speaker card is from um, Tracy Costin. All right, if you could just state your name. Tracy Costin, is it on? Please don't start the timer. Tracy Costin, I'm here as a parent and um, in the newspaper as well. I just wanted to make a general comment about how this process works. Um, I do want to thank everyone that came up to um, participate today, whether you're a candidate or you're here. And all of you up there, because it is, you are working hard for free. Um, with that being said, you're public figures, and nothing is private for you right now. So um, these questions on these forms, when I did this a few years ago, there was a statement on that form that said this would be published in the newspaper. And it was after the fact. I think it would be helpful, and you can speak to legal, but I think it would be really helpful if this process, if you're not going to do an election, that you have the community see their answers published in the paper a couple of weeks before. If they were running in an election, their blurbs would be in a little booklet, and people would see it before they vote. This process of it's so secret, and don't know who it is, don't they have, and Somebody I haven't even seen before is here tonight. I've never seen them on Zoom, never seen them here. I'm sure they're great. But it would be helpful. This is not private, secret stuff. Put their names out, put the blurbs out in the paper, weeks in advance, so that people can comment to you guys either privately or up here, like I'm doing, and say, hey, I'd love to see someone in education. Hey, I'd love to see this. Hey, I support this person. Because right now, the parents, the consensus is they don't know who some of these people are. And they would have liked to have seen the answers published before. And with that being said, if you can give me the answers to publish now, that would be great. But um, this, I don't, this process that you do and these questions, they're not super helpful as a parent. I'm just saying. Thank you. Thank you. May I? I am a senior board member. I've been through numerous elections and I have never been appointed, but I've participated in some appointments. And I think I said earlier, I am embarrassed at some. Okay. And the way this works now is someone will make a, a nomination. That nomination is seconded or it is not. If it is seconded, then it's called the question. If the majority of the board 
votes yes on the first candidate, this is over. That's the way this works. At the end of all this, the way it sits right now, each candidate, and you, you'll see me take action if it becomes necessary, each of you has the equal opportunity to gain the board's majority vote. That's the way it stands right now. At the end of the evening, if everything is tied up, I'll insist that we do everything that we did when it comes time to see you. I'm not going to sit up here and make comments. I'm not going to ask follow-up questions. I'm going to beat on everybody to make a choice this evening. When the majority vote comes in, if it is a vote that did not involve me, and that is the board's choice, I will fully accept and support that decision. It's important that you all know that. I will not be making a nomination this evening, but I will vote as appropriate. That said, I move that we open up the nomination process. I would like to nominate Mr. Day. Second. Nomination for Mr. De Jesus. Um, call for question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again, I would like to thank everybody for being here. I think every single candidate tonight would be an excellent addition to our board. Um, we have five members and we have one seat open, so I it but it is always a tough decision. But I do want to congratulate Mr. De Jesus um, and thank Mr. Wadsworth and Mr. Mays. Um, Excellent job, and thank you again for putting yourself out there. I do know how hard that is. Um, and I know that Lester knows how hard that is. And I know that there's people in the audience that also know how hard that is. Tom, have you gone through this process? Of appointment, no. Okay. Um, so I there's people that understand how, how that feels to sit in that hot seat. And um, I just want to say how much I appreciate you for putting yourself out there, all three of you. So thank you very much. Tom? Yes, I'd like to say that uh, it is difficult, and it's difficult for us as well, because an appointment is, this is our choice. It's not the community choice, but we're here to serve the community, and we're here at the uh, at the pleasure of the stakeholders. So what we want to do is try to make a choice that is going to support and uh, not please everybody, but make sure that we get a, a good candidate who is interested in working hard, is interested in making sure educational outcomes are fantastic for our children. And everybody's very good. And I encourage Mr. Mays to maybe with the elections roll around, if you will still have that passion to come in and to help out. And uh, please do, because uh, I think you would be very valuable. I really do. I feel your passion, Mr. Davis, and uh, I think that's fantastic. I think that's what this community needs. So I appreciate you coming forward, uh, especially since like we haven't seen you before. But uh, your your passion for for the district of education, I think you're here for the right reasons, and I really appreciate it. And uh, I just I think this will help out. Thank you. And oh, sorry, Chad left, but uh, I do appreciate Chad. Put in the effort as well. Uh, little, very top of Chad. And Chad, we do appreciate you. It's this community, especially all you've done uh, at the Watson family, is great people. So uh, thank you, Chad. Yeah, I think we're very fortunate to have people come out to actually try to be part of this. So it's a big deal. Thank you, Bill. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Ms. Day, Susan, I'll try not to hold against you that you're in the army. 
Thank you. I must be more. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for my father. Too. Thank you. Gentlemen, any comments that we have um, between us will be um, offline. Um, I, I I want to tell everyone that if you've been through an election and you notice like to have your signs thrown down and you know being misquoted and misrepresented or worse yet, put a lot, a lot of time into volunteering to be everywhere all the time, then have some derelict board member up here addressing you. That's very unfortunate. It's embarrassing. It's something I'll never get over. But at the end of the day, I want to thank the three gentlemen that came forward. Um, each of you has a unique skill set. And just remember, an appointment to this board has to be followed up with your candidacy if you choose to serve beyond that. Um, I am happy that um, this was a respectful process. When it comes to what does cost and ask, I think that's a reasonable ask. But again, it's one of those things that we seek the attorney's advice on. And I think that it could call for a board on a policy review when it comes to appointments. Yeah, and they just get legal opinion, and then it then it becomes an agenda item. Um, and I will bring this up as a matter of business in the next one. Um, I would recuse myself from from the ask when we do a future agenda items on uh, board policy. I do think that we need to be ultra responsive to the newspaper's request. So that means that we'll get a hold, and then um, because I will tell you why. My campaign promises are right here. I carry them with me all the time. They're from 2016. And I, uh, I'm aware of what they are. And I'm aware of how the world looks in on you with a microscope. You're familiar with that. You're familiar with that as well. Certainly, Mr. Wadsworth in the movie industry. So let's get her. I would suggest that we, I don't want to unilaterally say this. I would hope that the board would comment that we can do this. Mr. Costan, I would recuse myself if I were to give the relationship, but I think I would have the two other board members. I would hope I'd have your support in giving the superintendent direction to contact people and make sure that that information gets out or there's a citation coming back as to why it came. I would second that. No offense, Tom. So, thank you. A request made by your spouse from the microphone. <laughs> I'll stay on the boat, but I would say I do agree with the idea that review this so we are more prepared next time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hopefully, and this happened very, very fast. And that's what happens yeah. when people resign. Yes, very fast. Yeah. I, I will end it with this. When you sit up here and you are an elected official, I don't need everybody to hold an election every week. I think that the people who sit up here, I think the community understands most of us are pretty conservative. We're not out to do anything that's going to hurt kids. So sometimes you just got to step up to the plate and take the loss that comes with your decision, which is made from your moral standard. I don't need to have an election every week to have everybody tell me that I didn't make someone upset the decision process. I want enough elections to have that right. Please hold that in mind as you serve. Oh God, thank you. Um, my last comments were to the group as a whole. Um, I would like to say, Mr. Jesus, I am looking forward to your voice on the board. I feel like now we have a very diverse um, board with very different backgrounds. Um, and we bring different aspects of um, the, the decision-making process. And I feel like your background and your voice is going to be a big asset. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to that. And congratulations on spending time for free, giving back to our amazing community. Um, and I love that you came here four years ago and fell in love with our community. I've lived here for a little bit longer than that. And it, I take it personal when people say they love our community. So um, welcome. 
Welcome to Acton and welcome to the school board. No, well, thank you. So we will go ahead and move on to E1 calendar. Um, we will do. I got one more point of order. Let, let the record show that I initialed the pages of all applicants' um, applications, as well as the sheet that I wrote on and I'm handing them up to the superintendent right now. They're no longer in my possession to distribute or share. Okay. E1 calendar oath of office at the August 24th, 2023 regularly scheduled board meeting. So that's where you will take your oath of office, oath of office and become official. Um, F1 adjournment. The special board meeting of the Board of Trustees is adjourned at 8.01. Can I get a motion? I move. Discussion. Call for question. All those in favor? Cost of nine. Mask on. Paul's your aye. Brianna Texoni, I were adjourned at 801. 